distinguished personalities on the dais, which include our nation's leading personalities for the world of learning, the world of industry, and other walks of life. My esteemed colleagues of the university, which include my pro vice chancellor, Professor Chiranjee Bhattacharya, the esteemed alumni of this department, and of course, my very dear students. Today, I say a very big thank you to the Department of Chemical Engineering for enabling me to be here. And we are part of the centenary celebration of the department, which happens to be the oldest department of its kind, not only in India, but of the whole of Asia. Friends, today, as we seek to put the Indian higher education in a transformative board, we are stressing the importance of national science and technology. We are stressing the importance of unfolding the indigenous knowledge system. We are stressing the importance of university industry partnership program. And we are stressing the importance of turning inventions into innovations. Significantly, with the blessings of such personalities as Acharya Prabhula Chandra Ray and Hiral Roy, the chemical engineering department of this university has pioneered all these processes. And I'm sure the department will attain new heights of excellence in the coming days. I congratulate the head of the department and his colleagues for joining hands to celebrate the auspicious occasion in a befitting manner. On my own behalf and on behalf of the university, I express my sincere gratitude to all distinguished personalities, with some of whom, especially with Professor Sharma and Professor Jadod, I had the privilege to work in policy formulation bodies of the government of India to spare the valuable time and be with us to provide a source of sustenance to my colleagues in the department. I particularly recall the proud moment when during my tenure as the Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University, I had the privilege of conferring the honorary degree, degree on Professor M.M. Sharma and also the award him the first Acharya Prapulla Chandra Royal Medal. It was indeed, sir, it was indeed a very proud moment for us, for me. I join Professor Chiranji Bhattacharya to particularly express our university's gratitude to the alumni of the department of the department for making this contribution, not only to organize this program, the centenary program, but also to develop the infrastructure of the department. The alumni of a department remain the link between the past and the present. The alumni of the department, of any department, remains the ambassador of the department. And by extending the timely help, the alumni of the department has fulfilled the hopes that are imposed on them. We do look forward to receiving the alumni support in the coming days to meet the emerging challenges of Indian higher education, especially for a state university like Jadavpur. Friends, there is no doubt that compared to the countries which won independence almost at the same time that India did, what in history we call the period of decolonization, India has made tremendous progress in the realms of science and technology. But that as a social scientist, I'd like to pose a question to the distinguished house. And the question is, have we been able to foster a dynamic and constructive relationship between science and society? Perhaps not. The pursuit of science and society, as I see it, cannot be an end in itself, but it is a means to an end. The end being to create a better way to live in. And what I'd like to do is to read a couple of questions in the context of this crucial relationship between science and society. Let me draw your attention to two quotes from two leading scientists. The first thing I quote, time begins when speculation ends, unquote. The second thing I quote, the whole of science is nothing more than a refinement of everyday thinking, unquote. And the question that I would like to raise is whether after seven decades of our independence, have we been able to avoid speculations? Or have we been able to get rid of superstitions? Perhaps not. In fact, I'm sometimes I'm struck that very often my friends from the science community seem to be more superstitious 
than we who come from humanities and social sciences. We just need to ask ourselves, why has not the pursuit of science caused what Einstein looked for, the refinement of thinking, or what Swami Vivekananda called for the scientific temper? I believe among the factors, this dichotomy has been due to the absence of what I call an effective science communication policy, by which I imply a process which enables communication of the fruits of scientific knowledge to the broader sections of the society. One way of ensuring the communication of scientific knowledge to society is surely by undertaking popular science exercises. I am here reminded of Einstein, the meaning of relativity, or Stephen Weinberg, the first three minutes, or Watson's The Double Helix, which are perhaps some of the classic examples of how popular science tech communicated to people like us who do not belong to the privileged members of the scientific community some of the basic intricacies of scientific discovery. Barton Russell was certainly not a professional scientist in the modern sense of the term, but his ABC of relativity can be considered as a seminal contribution to popular science literature. Above all, we have the wonderful model of Kobe Guru Rabindranath which remains a classic instance of bringing to the young mind some of the basic truths of science. What I'm trying to submit is the necessity of scientists to reach out to the common people. The other issue which I'd like to highlight is the problematic of a disconnect between scientific discoveries and their use for the society. For instance, India has made tremendous progress in biotechnology. But why is it? As a leading social science journal tells us, only 10% of the fruits of researches in biotechnology go for the use of the poor farmers of the country. Or why is it that despite India becoming a leader of pharmaceutical industry, our country houses one of the largest number of children without basic vaccines? And why more than 450,000 infants die due to diarrhea every year? We do look forward to our scientists of not stopping at discovering, but also to help the process to ensure that the fruits of the discoveries benefit the broader sections of the society. The fundamental question I wish to raise for your kind consideration is how to pursue science and technology in a country like India so that science can become a weapon for inducing inclusive growth based on social equity and social justice and preservation of the rich legacy of our cultural pluralism. We thus look forward to the scientists to tell us how quantum mechanics, the gravitational theory, or the basics of nanoscience and chemical science can refine the thinking capacity of the civil society without which democracy cannot flourish. The famous scientist Richard Feynman had noted, and I quote, I think we should teach students wonders and that the purpose of knowledge is to appreciate wonders even more and that the knowledge is just to put into correct framework the wonder that nature is, unquote. What Feynman was underlining was the need of scientists to come out of the clusters of laboratories to re relate their researches with social aspirations and social demands. And I do hope that my colleagues in chemical engineering department can use the rich legacy of the department to contribute to this process, reminding themselves of how Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore had reposed in the faith, had reposed in the is this faith in the students of the Bengal National College and School, which was the precursor of the present Jadupur University, and I quote from him. Tayaj, Ami Chapsodiko ke onurot kori techi, ei vidyala er pran ke onubob koro. Shomosto Bangali jati pranish songe, ei vidyala er je pranish jogniya che, ta nije rontor korle modhu bolobdi koro. Ya ke kono din ekhi school bolia bhum bhum kori bena, tomado nijer mahab daikto roilo. And also remembering the Aurobindo Ghosh, who was deeply associated with the process that culminated in the establishment of Jadupur University, and he had aptly envisaged, I quote, such a time has now arrived for our motherland, when nothing is dearer than our service, when everything else is to be directed to that end. If you will study, study for our sake, train yourselves body and mind and soul 
for our services, un unquote. Let this day of celebration be also a day of commitment for my colleagues in chemical engineering department, both to sustain their quest for scientific excellence and also to contribute to the process of fostering a constructive relationship between science and society about which the founding personalities of Jadavpur University had reminded us. Above all, our philosopher president, Sarvapuri Radhakrishnan, had reminded us, and I quote, a life of joy and happiness is possible only on the basis of the knowledge of science, unquote. As I conclude, let me also compliment the local press for highlighting the contributions of this Department of Chemical Engineering. This is certainly a welcome move because usually the press is interested more in identifying holes in Jadupur University rather than celebrating the attainments of Jadupur University. Let this be a break so far as the, my media friends are concerned. With this words, would I have the pleasure of inaugurating the celebration which I'm sure would be academically fruitful, invigorating, and stimulating. Thank you very much indeed.